Hello and welcome to the Yogscast Guide to Halfus Wormbreaker, the first boss of the Bastion of Twilight. Halfus is a fight that changes from week to week, for he has a selection of adds or mini bosses that he can pick from to aid him and assist him. There are five that he can choose from, and every week he selects three of them, which you must do combat with. Indeed. The first boss on the far left is the Nether Scion. If he's up, he gives Halfus a 100% attack speed buff, but if you release him, he will give Halfus a 25% damage, hit chance, and attack speed debuff. The next one is the Slate Dragon. If this goes up, Halfus will have a stacking Mortal Strike, so you need to regularly tank switch, uh, and if you release him, he will occasionally stun Halfus for, for 12 seconds, which allows you to mitigate the Mortal Strike on the tank somewhat by giving you time for it to drop off. The third dragon, the first one on the right of him, is the Storm Rider. This is arguably the most dangerous run, and allows Halfus to cast an AoE knockback called Shadow Nova. When you release the Storm Rider, it makes the Shadow Nova cast time longer. So if you don't release this drake, you won't be able to interrupt the Shadow Nova, and that's really bad. The next one is actually a cage of whelps, and if these are up this week, they will give Halfus' dragon a nasty AoE flame breath that hits the whole raid. When they get released, it makes the damage very, very small. The last drake, the far right one, is the Time Warden. If this is up, Halfus' dragon casts very painful fireballs that are unavoidable. However, if you release the Time Warden, they will leave fireballs on the floor and you can easily see them and move out of the fire patches. It's very obvious and it makes the fight a lot easier. So there's five dragons to choose from, but only three of them will be up every week. And that means that there's several combinations that you can get. However, most of the time you're going to want to pull some of the dragons first every time. Such as the Storm Rider, which does the Shadow Nova. Now we've killed him a couple of times, so I'm going to show you a couple of different attempts where we've used different tactics to kill them. So one of the worst possible combinations you can get is the Storm Rider for Shadow Nova, plus Mortal Strikes, plus the Frenzy. Now in this situation we must pull the Storm Rider first, but because we've got a Frenzy and a Mortal Strike up as well, that will mean that the Mortal Strike is stacking up very very quickly on our tank, and tank switching is going to be a real problem. So actually what we have to do here is release two drakes at the start. So let's just have the fight. So here the other tank is going to pull Halfus and I'm going to release the Storm Rider. Because it takes a little bit of time for the Storm Rider to be mind controlled, he will get off a Shadow Nova, which hits the raid. So you need to make sure that, that, that you know that people are aware of that. But now the Storm Rider is released, the Shadow Nova is interruptible on Halfus. He casts it roughly every 6 seconds, so one Elemental Shaman on his own can actually interrupt every single one. Uh, and we had an Elemental Shaman stay on Halfus the whole time, interrupting every single Shadow Nova. If you don't have that, the best way to do it is have uh, an interrupt rotation. Need needs to be done. Every Shadow Nova needs to be interrupted because it does so much damage. So meanwhile, the other tank has freed the Nether Scion, which means the Mortal Strike's going to stack up slower. I've already taunted off him and here he's taunted back. The good thing about this combination is there isn't that much AoE damage going on, so the healers can focus their energies on keeping the tanks alive. This fight is very front-loaded. You need to burn heroism early to kill the Drake quickly, and once you have done, it shouldn't be too difficult. Lewis, Lewis, puts my hand in the air. I've got a question for you, Lewis. Why don't you just ignore all of the dragons and just kill Halfus? That's a very good question, Simon. The reason is, is because although there is a 6 minute enrage timer on this fight, every drake you kill will give you a 50% damage bonus, allowing you to kill the next one faster and the next one faster. Therefore, burning heroism at the start is actually a very efficient way to do it, because once you've got the first drake down, you'll get a big damage bonus that will make up for the fact that you used heroism early. So now we've killed two drakes and we're pulling the third one, the slate dragon. This is arguably the least useful of the drakes. Uh, as it only stuns Halfus for 12 seconds periodically. However, there is certainly time to pull it, kill it, and then get the damage bonus, and plenty of time to kill Halfus afterwards, so we didn't have a problem. Some people have been ignoring this third Drake and just burning Halfus from now on, but as you will see, it can actually, the 12 seconds stun can actually be a bit useful later on, when he gets below 50%. So now Halfus is below 50%, he gains a new ability called Furious Roar. 
This is where he stuns the raid three times in quick succession. If the Storm Rider's not up and he's not casting Shadow Novas, this is no problem. But if he is casting Shadow Novas, he will cast a Shadow Nova straight after the third stun. And because everyone's stunned, they can't interrupt it. In order to interrupt the Shadow Nova, you will need to use abilities to avoid the stuns. So, Icebound Fortitude for Death Knights, Mages can blink out of it, uh, PvP trinkets work, Human Racial, that kind of thing. You need to set up a rotation to ensure that all of them are interrupted. The hardest bit of the fight is definitely the, the pull and keeping the tanks alive through the first couple of drakes. Once that's over, pretty simple, as long as you get your interrupt rotation correct on the end. So here's another video, and in this week we had the Time Warden up, along with the Slate Dragon and the Whelp Cage. Now in this situation, the most dangerous are the Whelps. They also are relatively easy to AoE down quickly, so often pulling these first is a very very good idea. Killing the Whelps prevents the large flame breath damage from the Proto Dragon. You can see it going off here, and if the Whelps weren't pulled, it would be hitting the raid very, very hard. Once the Whelps are almost dead, we release the Time Warden. This allows you to see where the fireballs from the Time Warden are going to land and avoid them. As you can see, there are a lot of fire patches on the floor, and therefore this fight is more about movement and raid healing than necessarily tank healing. Because the Slate Dragon's up, we do need to continually tank switch. If it were the Nether style instead, who has the Frenzy for example, we wouldn't need to tank switch, but there would be slightly more damage on one of the tanks. Were we to have got, for example, the Storm Rider instead of the Slate Dragon, or instead of the Time Warden, we probably would have had to pull the Storm Rider and the Whelps together. This fight is much easier, as you can see, than the other attempt. Movement, killing the drakes quickly and the dragons quickly, it's not too difficult. In addition, because there's no Shadow Novas going on, it's much, much cleaner and safer. You don't have to worry about interrupts, and when he gets below 50% and begins doing his Furious Roar, since he does no Shadow Nova, there's no need to uh, organise a rotation to break out of the stunts. Overall, I really like this fight. I think it's fun that it changes from week to week and you have to use slightly different strategies. With that in mind, there are a lot of different combinations, some easy, some hard. So hopefully this video will give you an idea of which ones you need to pull, in which order, to get them down. Good luck, and I will catch up with you some more boss guides later.